Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the Finding Peace Within podcast. I am your host, Miss Lisa L. Dalton. Let me first say thank you for tuning into the podcast. There are a hundred of podcasts, hundreds, hundreds of podcasts out here that you could be listening to right now, but you chose to listen to the Finding Peace Within podcast. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, let me say welcome. And if you are a repeat guest, welcome back to the Finding Peace Within podcast. Now, we were the Finding Peace Within podcast was created to help you find your authentic self through spiritual awareness. And how do you do that? You do that by studying the Word of God and doing the work that's required to find your peace within. Now, if you would like to follow me on social media, just find me on Google. Just Google my name, Lisa L. Dalton, and you'll find me on my website, findingpeacewithin.org, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all those social media outlets. Just Google my name and you'll find me there. Also, every morning, tune in to the Lisa six and three on Facebook. That's where I give my strength for the day to you. Those are the scriptures that the Lord downloaded into my spirit every morning. And I break it down in practical terms so that you can understand what God is giving you strength for just that day. Remember that his mercies are new every morning. He takes care of tomorrow and and yesterday is gone. We want strength for today. That's Lisa six and three every Monday through Friday on Facebook. It's also uploaded to Instagram because you know, y'all know now when you upload to Facebook, it goes to Instagram automatically. So just go there and you find Lisa six and three. And if you haven't followed me yet or subscribed to the YouTube channel, do that. Go to YouTube again, type in Lisa L. Dalton or Lisa six and three or finding peace within and subscribe to the channel. Now this week, um, our lesson will be a spinoff from last week's lesson, how to walk in victory. That's what we talked about last week, how to walk in victory. Now this week I want to talk about, so you messed up. You messed up on your way to victory. And many of us have done that. Oh my God, many of us have done that. And we've gotten back up and we've started over again and we messed up again and we've gotten back up. But some of us um, haven't found the way to recover from a mess up. Now in the culture that we're living in today, man, you would get canceled if you mess up. But we're living as believers in the kingdom of God. And there should never be a canceling in the kingdom of God. Let's open up with a short word of prayer. Lord, we thank you today for your love and your grace. We thank you for your mercy, which is new every morning. We thank you for your peace. We ask that you be with me as I teach this lesson on so what you messed up and how to move forward. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, 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 amen. So what you messed up and what is messing up? Messing up to me is when I did not live up to my own expectations. That's a mess up for me. When I set out to do something and it didn't go the way I planned or, or perhaps I hurt someone along the way of getting to where I'm trying to go or I was very insensitive to someone else's feelings and I lashed out or you made a really, really big, bad mistake that affected the lives of other people. What do you do when that happens? What do you do when you've messed up? What do you do when failure has taken place? Now the scripture says in Proverbs 24 and 16, for though the righteous man falls seven times, they rise again. Now that in itself is hope for me to know that, yes, I'm going to fall seven times, seven times. And that, that doesn't mean that after the seventh time, you're not going to rise. That just, that's a metaphoric um, description of the number of times that we will fall over and over and over and over. And righteous meaning right standing with God. Your motives are right. 
You just haven't quite mastered the the um, ability or the the task of starting moving forward and succeeding in what you're wanting to do. Your you could get your eyes off of the Lord. You could get your eyes off of the task. Like Peter when he stepped out on the water, in the beginning his eyes were set on the Lord. And what happened? He saw there was water underneath and he fell. Like David and Bathsheba and all he did. Now, I'm not sure if there were any good intentions in him and his relationship with Bathsheba and what he did, but what happened there? A whole nation fell. And when he was um, told about what he did, what did he do? He repented. He acknowledged what he did. He repented and he moved forward. And guess what? The Lord forgave him. Now, I say, I'm going to give you six that I believe helped me when I make mistakes and have made mistakes and still making mistakes. I'm little, not as many as I did when I first started out in this journey of finding my peace within. But there have been times in my life or even now, if I feel like I've offended someone, what I do. And that thing is number one, accept your mistakes. We call that also um, being accountable. Accept the responsibility for what you did. Don't just ignore the fact that you offended someone. Don't ignore the fact that you hurt someone's feelings or that you caused another person to fall. Accept it. Galatians 5, 25 says, since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. When we do things, um, we live by as righteous people. We live according to the word of God. We live by the spirit of God. So when the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of the Lord, of God, of Jesus, it he gives a, a, a unctioning in your soul, in your spirit. We, we say, I got a good feeling. But when your conscious mind tells you that you did something wrong or you offended someone, the Holy Spirit will say, you know, that was right. You know you hurt that person's feelings or you know what you're doing will hurt someone. You know that because sometimes um, just owning the mistake, just owning the fact that you messed up is really hard to do. And why is that hard? Because pride takes place, right? No one wants to admit that they made a mistake. No one wants to admit that they messed up. Who wants to say, man, I really screwed that up. <laughs> I mean, really, I really screwed that up. Nobody wants to say that. I can remember um, my husband. Um, he's really not a yard person. This was early in our marriage. And I got so upset with him for not cutting the grass because I really pride my yard and the fact that I have pretty green grass, especially in the summertime. And I called myself going to take things in my own hand. I went out there and got the mower and I started to mow the lawn myself. And he had already told me he was going to mow the lawn, but I thought, I thought he wasn't going to do it because number one, it was already dark. <laughs> so how are you going to cut grass in the dark? But guess what happened? He was very offended by that because that meant I didn't trust his word. And I had to apologize. I had to first admit that I was wrong for stepping out and doing something that he said he was going to do regardless of the fact that it was dark already. We have a beautiful lit backyard, so he could have easily cut the grass. But my thing was he didn't do it in my time. So what did I do? I took it upon myself to go and cut that grass and not allowing him the opportunity to do it himself. So what? The Holy Ghost just said, Lisa, you know you was wrong for that. So I had to admit I was wrong and then go and apologize. So that's the first thing we want to do, except that we made a mistake. I was wrong in that. And there have been many other things that I was wrong about, but especially when we're dealing with relationships, we have to consider the other person's feelings. It's not just about your feeling and only your feeling. It's about the other person's feelings as well. Number two, find the lesson in it. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. I'm not going to read all of that, but it says rejoice always, pray, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. 
for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now that sounds real crazy, right? Give thanks in all circumstances. Well, every life lesson should be teaching us a lesson. There are lessons in everything in life. It, the lesson I learned from that incident with my husband and that lawnmower and the grass and him not doing it on my time was to be patient. Allow him to do it on his time. Trust that it will get done. And also, I need to pull back. He says, now fall back. He said, fall back, love. You know, relax. It's okay. Relax, you know. But then we end up hiring a, a yard man, so we don't have to fuss over grass anymore. But um, find a solution. What's the lesson? This is something I, I know I can't do. This is something I need to relinquish to someone else. I really don't operate um, well when things don't go according to the way we plan. You know, those immediate changes, you know, adapting to immediate change. I'm like, well, what happened? We planned it this way. Why are we doing it this way? And especially if something worked yesterday, and it's not working today. Man, that gets under my skin. I think I just fall apart. And I used to lose myself. But now that I've done my spiritual work and still continue to do it, I say, now, Lisa, why are you feeling that way? What is that about? What's this anxiousness about? And I have to pull back, as my husband says, pull back, reassess the situation. What are you learning about yourself? That's good. What are you learning about yourself when you mess up? Mm, there is a lesson in everything. You are the you are not the person that you were. When you learn the lesson, you are not the person that you were then. I thought about um, a few days ago, you know, what God has done in my life and the per today and the person I was when I was 18, when I was 24, when I was 29, you know, and 39 and even 49. I am not that Lisa that you knew back in Hartsville. I am not that Lisa that you knew back in Hartsville High School. I am not that Lisa that you knew who worked at CPNL for Burn Security. I am not that Lisa who came to Charlotte at the age of 24 and started at Presbyterian and, and living a life of lies and deceit and promiscuity when I was a teenager. I'm not that person now at 59. Why? I've learned some lessons through my lifetime. That right there will not work out well for you if you continue to do it, Lisa. So you got to find a better way, sweetheart. And I've found a better way. And that way was submitting my ways to the Lord. Find a lesson in it. Number three, be kind to yourself. Now, how can you love anyone if you don't love yourself? That's something RuPaul says a lot on his show. How can you love anyone if you don't love yourself? Well, the Bible says the same thing in Ephesians 5 and 29. It says, for no one has ever hated his own body, but he nourishes it, nourishes and tenderly cares for it as the Messiah does the church. How many of you have done harm to yourself because of, of a mistake. Now, many of you know, if you follow me, I've been divorced twice. I've been married three times, you know, with God's grace, you know, Stephen and I will be married 16 years on December 23rd, um, to God be the glory. But I've made some mistakes in those relationships. I've made some mistakes in those marriages and the lessons that I learned in that was I had to love Lisa. I had to be true to who Lisa really was and who Lisa really is in order for me to truly love them. But what I had to do first was 
develop a real relationship with the Lord. Why? God is love. And the only way we can really truly love ourselves is to know him because he teaches us. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to love ourselves. Yes, we take baths every night. We shampoo our hair when we need to. We dress up. We go to the doctor. But what about our soul? We put on pretty clothes, designer clothes, make ourselves look rich. Like we got something, but all inside we're following up, falling apart. I'm watching. Um, I've just finished watching um, Downton Abbey. I had a binge on it was what, six series and I watched it all like two and a half weeks. Um, a beautiful story of how you can be rich and have it all and still be jealous and envious of other people and be insecure. I mean, they could get whatever they wanted. But they were jealous and they were insecure and they didn't know how to love. They know how they knew how to buy things and boss people around, but they didn't have love. They had on the finest clothes, but yet sad inside. And now I'm watching a, a series called Paradise. And the woman, she was she was sad and her husband was out working all the time and she was alone and they opened up this store called Paradise and she was just in there spending up his money. You say, bill it to him. He'll pay for it. But she wanted love. Beautiful. But guess what? She wasn't kind to herself because she indulged in things that did not bring her happiness. What she wanted was love and acceptance. Mm. And the only type of love that we can get and be secure with is the love of God. But he says we need to be kind to ourselves. That's three. Be kind to yourself. You messed up. Yes, Lisa, you've had two marriages that have ran its course. They say failed, however you want to call it. But be kind to yourself. Say, you know what? You are a good person, Lisa, and you are a good wife. You can be with the right person. You know, two good people, just not good together. You can be. I think to me that um, the, the marriages that did not go uh, well for me seem like the biggest failures that I've had um, in my life. I talk about it often, not that it still bothers me, but it is still something that I, I really do need to um, deal with. It's something I really do need to go along with. Now, it is something that I really need to, um, I continue to talk about. I continue to do what I need to do to move forward after that. And, and I am still working out that part of my life. Number four, remember that you're remember that you're thinking about it more than anyone else. This is huge. This is huge. We think that everybody is gossiping about us. Everyone is talking about us. And nobody's thinking about it but you. You're the only one thinking about it. It's like like in the in the movie frozen let it go let it go let it go <laughs> remember how you think in your heart is how things are manifest not how someone else thinks in their heart things are manifested is how you think and that's what the scripture says proverbs 23 and 7 says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he eat and drink saith he to thee but his heart is not with thee you're eating and you're drinking and you're thinking bad things about yourself. And you're thinking that everybody's looking. Ain't nobody looking. People got their own problems. Ain't nobody caring about you. Not that they don't care about you, but they're not. Now, y'all know in the world we're living in, they got the bloggers that's talking and gossiping about everybody. But if you're kind of famous, you know, people are going to kind of talk about you. But us common folk, man, you better keep moving. Ain't nobody sitting around the kitchen table talking about you. They got their own problems. Move forward in your life. Do your thing. Do you boo? Do you boo? Don't worry about what people thinking. You are down on yourself. Move forward. Remember that you're thinking about it more than others. 
So what it didn't happen? So what you didn't finish school? So what if the relationship broke up? Guess what? There is always tomorrow. There is always tomorrow. There is always a second chance. As long as you're still here and there's breath in your body, you have another chance. That's all, that's all I'm saying. There is another chance. Number five, figure out what's next. What's next for you? What's next? When I got divorced the second time, I didn't give up on being a wife. I did not because I knew there was somebody assigned to me. I knew there was a gift that I had that someone else needed in order for their gift to manifest. Don't ever stop. Figure out what's next. Philippians 3, 12 and 13 says, not that I have already attained. And this is Paul talking. I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold on that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold for me. Christ Jesus has treasures laid up for us, y'all. We can't get caught up on the things from the past that we don't move forward to the future. We have to live in the now. We have to live today. We have to move forward. Yesterday is gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow will never be mine. Give me the strength to do it one day at a time. I paraphrase, paraphrase that song, but that's what it's saying. One day at a time. 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I am pressing forward for the upward call with the things that the Lord has for me. I'm pressing for the upward call. Let's press forward to what God has for us, not for what we think we're going to get from God. God has already made some promises, child. There are, he has a million promises for us that we have not gotten yet. I'm just saying millions of promises. Number six, let it go. Just let it go and move forward. Galatians 6 and 1 says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person. Man, the church, how can we gently, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. We cannot walk in the seat of judgment. The only one that's going to judge is, is Jesus Christ. You got to work out your own soul salvation. You got to work out your own issues. You got to work out your own problems. You can easily look and get all bound up with what's going on in your life that you get stuck but you have got to learn to let it go man you got to learn to let it go and you got to trust that god is going to provide you with what you need the strength to move forward but there is a wisdom in a multitude of counsel so when you need someone to talk to get that one that brother in, the, in or sister who is spiritual who will restore you who will pray with you and walk through this thing called healing with you don't get stuck here is where we are this is the most difficult part if we find ourselves and we really double check ourselves were we really accountable for our responsibilities that could be a reason why you can't move forward because you never accepted your part in the situation. Yeah, I, I can't blame it all on them. I had something to do with it too. A lot to do with it. But am I willing to accept that responsibility and then look at the lesson that was in that and begin to do something different? They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. You can't do that. You have to let go of the thoughts in your mind. You have to be prayerful. You have to be hopeful. You have to believe God is going to take you through it, bring you out of it. And then when you walk away whole, you won't go back to it. When you're healed and you're set free and you're delivered, the desire to do such a thing is now gone. There are things that I desire to do that I don't do anymore. The, the desire, I can go right now into that place and not be tempted with it.
Why? Because I am fully delivered and set free. So what you messed up? There are ways to get out of that feeling of being stuck in your mess. They say, let your test be a testimony. That's what it is today. Now let's recap six things. What do you need to do first? Accept your mistakes. Galatians 5, 25 through 26. Number two, find the lesson in the mistakes. Find the lesson. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Number three, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Ephesians 5 and 29. Number four, remember that you're think of, thinking about it more than anyone else is. Proverbs 23 and 7. Number five, figure out what's next for your life. Philippians 3, 12 and 13, forgetting about the things in the past. Let's press forward. And number six, let it go. You don't want to put no new wine in old wine skin, right? That's scripture too. Because what's going to happen? That new wine is going to burst and it's going to spill on the floor. Start with a new mind. That's Galatians 6 and 1. Let it go. If you need to talk to someone else, who is spiritual, who will let you know God's going to help you along the way. And I am going to be that person here on earth that's going to guide you through that healing. I had a mentor when I was going through and getting my life right, getting myself together. And she stepped me through those processes. How do I get here? How do I get from there to here and be able to stand in the woman of God and in the essence of who Lisa is? And I thank her today for the hand that she gave me as I walked out this thing. We can't do this alone. That's the thing we have to remember. God gave us people to rely on. We all should have a Nathan. We all should have someone to call us out and help us along our journey. <clears throat> the Bible says that iron is sharper than iron. A Excuse me, a dull iron cannot sharpen another iron. You got to be sharp. Connect with someone who you know has already gone through, who can help you on your journey. Mm. I pray this was blessing to you. I pray it was helpful to you. I pray that you will realize, yeah, you messed up. Yeah, I messed up. I, I said some things. But we all have a way out. All of us have a way out. Telling the truth, facing the facts, and moving forward. Mm, that's a good word. Now, let's close out with a short word of prayer. Lord, we thank you today. We honor your name. We just praise you, O oh God, for your love and your grace. We praise you, O oh God, for who you are in our lives. We ask that you be with us after this lesson. Lord, let us understand Yes, we've all messed up. The righteous man falls seven times just to say, we're going to mess up over and over and over and over again. But just like David, let us find that place in our heart to say, Lord, forgive me and move forward. Be with us as we go throughout our week. Give us blessings and blessings and blessings. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Now you go. <clears throat> Make it a wonderful, wonderful day, a wonderful week. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media outlets. You can also find me on Facebook every morning with my Lisa 6 and 3. Now, what do I always say before I close out? This is it. A centered soul is a centered mind. Be blessed.